Headlines most affecting Chilliwack this week. A man found guilty of robbing a sandwich store on Vancouver Island can't stay in Chilliwack. An update on the Pacific Autism Family Network. The fall season of the Chilliwack Symphony Orchestra is on its way, and a load of junior and high school football information. Peter Lang will have more in sports. And our special guest this week, Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton, Steve Sacamano with the Pacific Autism Family Network, and the conductor of the CSO, Paula DeWitt. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. A man who was found guilty of robbing a subway sh a sandwich shop in Courtney in 2020 will be able to appeal his sentence, but he won't be able to live in Chilliwack while he does it. Edmund Patterson hoped to be released from jail and then stay at Chilliwack's Joshua House during appeal. Now, Joshua House is a Christian-centered residential treatment center located on Chilliwack Lake Road. Patterson had a bed secured and with strict uh, conditions in place that would have prevented him from leaving the facility without written consent from the court. Well, a Vancouver judge said he was still too high risk and he's going to have to stay in a jail cell. He will not come to Chilliwack. Former federal political candidate for mission was supposed to be in the Chilliwack law courts this week, facing a number of charges. Wyatt Scott is looking at 12 counts, including five that are called cave files. That's indicative of intimate partner violence. Now, including in that charges of forcible confinement, administering a nauseous thing or substance with the intent to endanger, and trafficking in persons under the age of 18. The list of non-cave file matters include sexual assault, break and enter, forgery, and a number of firearms counts. All of the charges date between April the 15th and July the 12th of this year here in Chilliwack. Scott gained notoriety during the 2015 federal election campaign when he released a video that is still up on social media of him riding a giant computer-generated Canada goose. The Pacific Autism Family Network has been in Chilliwack for quite some time, but not too many people really know about their resources. Steve Sacamano with the organization will be joining us in a couple of minutes' time to talk about the network and what they have to provide in the community. Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton, along with her counterpart Chilliwack MLA Dan Coulter, will both be heading back to Victoria in a few weeks for the fall session of the legislature. Now, Patton has had a busy summer with a number of initiatives, including the Status of Women Conference in Prince Edward Island. Patton will be joining us in a couple of minutes' time to update on basically what she did for her summer holiday. You should be dancing. Chilliwack Hospice Society is hosting our 18th annual Disco Gala presented by Silver Creek Travel on Saturday, September 23rd at the Say Community Centre on Chilliwack River Road. Restaurant 62 will be catering a gourmet plated meal. And DJ Adam Kruger will be spinning all the disco hits you know and love for a disco dance after the live auction. Tickets are on sale now for $175, available online at Chilliwack Hospice Society. So get ready to boogie. We'll see you at the 18th Annual Chilliwack Hospice Society Gala, September 23rd. Ford Road will be closed at the Rogers Ford Ditch for retaining wall construction. And that's until the weekend. And remember, it is a long weekend. Plan your route accordingly. Check with the City of Chilliwack website for more information on the construction there. This past Monday morning's commute turned into a nightmare just after 3 in the morning. A woman was struck and killed on Highway 1 eastbound near Vetter. The Mounties continue their investigation. No names have been released. Cultus Lake Park's conditional water license allows for the retention of water in the lake between March 15th and September 15th annually. Well, be advised that the level of the lake will gradually begin to drop as the park strategically dismantles the weir, and that starts on Sunday, September the 10th, so not the long weekend, the weekend after. The lake level will be balanced solely on natural inflow and discharge, and again, that starts September the 15th. The fall concert season for the Chilliwack Symphony Orchestra almost here. The conductor and music director Paula Duet will be with us in a couple of minutes for an update on the 2023-24 season. After the break, we will be talking to Paula Duet as well, Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton, Steve Sacamono with Pacific Autism Network, and then Peter Lang and a ton of sports, including football. This is just too much. This is a warning. Thrilltober, a 48-hour film race is coming to Chilliwack. Horror, 
and thriller movies just three minutes long will keep you on the edge of your seat. The fear is real, my friends. <coughs> oh, yeah, uh, but the, the blood isn't. That's just ketchup. It's all part of the fun. Join us on October 27th for the spine tingling screamings at the Vineyard Community Center. And if you want to make your own film for your chance at great prizes, bring your team to the film race launch on Friday, October 13th. Ooh, scary. Ah, of course. Uh, you start this barbecue or what? Yeah. Totally. I brought the ketchup. Perfect, you're dead. Thank you. You're welcome. This week in Chilliwack continues with the conductor, executive director, and the person who signs the checks for the Chilliwack Symphony Orchestra, Paula DeWitt. Wow, a new season is about to start. This is so cool. Everybody's getting pumped up. And yeah, it's the end of August, but uh, what can we expect this year? You've, you've got a few things that you've had on the burner that now we can talk about for shows. Yes, well, now that COVID's over, thankfully, we, yeah. we can get back to full programming and we have a pretty full program. Already starting in September, we have Handel's Dixit Dominus, which is a stunning work. And then we will be doing Mozart's Requiem, which is also very well known. And of course, Handel's Messiah coming up in December. And then in the spring, we have, we're bringing back our Voices concert, which features all the choirs of the symphony orchestra, as well as a couple other guest choirs, like the male Orpheus Choir which is going to be fun. And then we end our season with our traditional piano extravaganza. And this year's guest will be Clinton Danoni, who is amazing. And we had so many people enter this year, 60 people applied wow. for it. Yes. And we got to listen to all of the students and we're going to be spoiled with some really good okay. playing. Yeah, yeah, we're very excited about this season. There's a bit of an oddity. We we're talking about this off camera that the actual season is going to start in Surrey and then come here. Or what? How did that work? OK, so Surrey actually loves us quite a bit and yeah. has given us a nice grant of $8,000 to put two concerts on in their community. So our first concert of the season will be in the city of Surrey at the lovely um, Catholic church with great acoustics. So we'll be doing the Dixit okay. Dominus first mm -hmm. in Surrey, and then the next day at the Holy Rosary Cathedral, which is also a stunning venue. Oh my goodness. Not first, that she's pumped, if you no, notice. But the first yeah. time we performed in, in that venue, it was like a, we were making a CD. You could just feel the whole acoustics and the atmosphere. It's so lovely to play in that venue. Very cool. So on the 29th of September, we'll be at the Good Shepherd in Surrey. Mm -hmm. And the 30th, the very next night, we'll be in the um, Holy Rosary Cathedral. So the first show back in Chilliwack is... Handel's Messiah. Handel's Messiah. That's correct. Okay. Because we're doing the... Um, the Mozart's Requiem in Abbotsford at St. James, which is also a very, very lovely acoustic. And when we do the sacred works, we really want to have that gorgeous acoustic for the choir and for the musicians. And it really pumps everybody up. And Well, there's just, an intimacy with, with those venues too. There is. I mean, a concert hall is a concert hall, don't get me wrong. But those places, there's something about it. Yeah. I don't get it. And for the sacred works, it's yeah. just, it just makes sense. And, yeah. and it's... It's, it's a lot of fun to perform in those places. Um, tickets are now available for the entire season. And of course, a lot of people, what's Christmas? Oh, okay, we're doing Handel. Uh, are those tickets available right now? Or? All of our tickets are available and Handel's Messiah will sell out. So if that's something yeah. you want to take your family to, we suggest that you do that right away. Bria Skonberg is coming to town. She was supposed to be here last December. Mother Nature said no. Uh, that was uh, a story unto itself. Uh, Bria's coming up in a hurry, but as I understand it, there aren't too many tickets left. I believe it. She's an amazing trumpet player. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and that date is just off the top of my tongue. That September is... 18th? 18th, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. And uh, again, go to uh, the, the website for the Chilliwack Symphony or the Cultural Center uh, for, for more information. Um, this is, 
has the, the community really recovered from COVID because not just you, but everybody took a big, big hit uh, when it comes to funding and sponsorships and ticket sales and just the support. Uh, it, it sounds like everybody's come back. It's, it, it's everybody's back on the rails. It's feeling like it is, but there's still some things you go, hey, why didn't that do better? Or why isn't there more singers here? Yeah. So I think some people still are careful, but for the best part, I would say yeah. we're out of COVID. But maybe people have developed different habits. So we want to get you back, back in the theater and, and listening and watching us again. Uncomfortable subject for you, but we're going to mention it because you need funding to put these shows on. So if you're a corporate and you want to spend some money on the arts, this is the lady to talk to. <laughs> so you can be reached at, through the website? Sure, or you can call me 604-795-0521. And your phone's going to ring off the hook now. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> Paula DeWitt, uh, the conductor, executive director, Chilliwack Symphony Orchestra. We're pumped. Awesome. Thanks Thank for, you so much. Thanks for being here. You're, You're watching this week. You should be dancing. Chilliwack Hospice Society is hosting our 18th annual Disco Gala presented by Silver Creek Travel on Saturday, September 23rd at the Say Community Centre on Chilliwack River Road. Restaurant 62 will be catering a gourmet plated meal. And DJ Adam Kruger will be spinning all the disco hits you know and love for a disco dance after the live auction. Tickets are on sale now for $175. Available online at Chilliwack Hospice Society. So get ready to boogie. We'll see you at the 18th annual Chilliwack Hospice Society Gala, September 23rd. This week continues with Chilliwack Kent, MLA Kelly Padden. We've got a lot of territory to cover because you've had a busy summer. Um, the big thing recently, and uh, it, it's a mouthful for a title, and uh, the uh, Mobile Integrated Crisis Response Teams. And in a nutshell, this is a mental health professional with a cop, or how is this thing going to work? Yeah, this, this is really exciting, and Chilliwack has been advocating for this, called CAR 67, a lot of people would have heard about it that way. Yeah. In July, uh, Minister Farnworth and Minister Whiteside um, and Min Minister of State Coulter and I announced that CAR 67 or this uh, team would be coming to Chilliwack as well as eight other new communities mm -hmm. um, across the province and it's exactly what you said. It is um, a really fantastic system where when the car responds to a mental health call um, there's a mental health professional there in addition to the police officer uh, and the, the intention is really to make sure that um, our RCMP officers are doing law enforcement um, and when it's a mental health situation that requires de-escalation or assessment that there's a mental health professional there available to take appropriate action and make sure that services or referrals um, are happening based on what's happening. Um, the no, no, nuts and bolts, because people have been asking how much is this going to cost, how many people and who trains, or how are they going to train the mental health professionals? Is that going to be at the Justice Institute, or is how are they going to, how are they going to work this? Because you've got Chilliwack with RCMP, you've got Abbotsford with a city force. Uh, do we have overlapping jurisdictions, or how is this going to work? Yeah, no, it's the that's a great question. The cars work with the local okay. police force, so whether that's RCMP or a municipal force, um, and it works in tandem with the local police force and the health authority of the area. So uh, people are trained, you know, professionally. I mean, we know our police officers are well trained, and in Chilliwack here, um, we were t when we were talking earlier, we're, we're lucky. We have a lot of officers mm -hmm. who already have a lot of training and are great at handling those situations. But at the end of the day the police need to be able to police um, and one in five calls at least are involved with mental health issues so having those mental health professionals available um, you know it'll help reduce stigma it'll help free up uh, resources so that the police can do policing it'll help also divert some of uh, the people who were being taken to the ER um, maybe that wasn't exactly what they needed but it was the best available yeah. you know in that interaction police um, there's a lot of good that'll come from these teams and I'm really excited uh, the, the the number of three million to help fund this uh, how many boots on the ground locally in Chilliwack do we know how many people yet or is that still being worked out 
Yeah, so the sizes, depending on the community of the teams, that'll be worked out between the detachments and the local health authority. So um, I don't have those numbers in front yeah. of me right now, but um, I'm looking forward to updates, not only from Chilliwack, but across the community, uh, or the, across the province, yeah. because we know in the communities where those car programs are, they're really successful and popular. Uh, we just had uh, another bad week of, of overdoses and drugs on the street. Vancouver Overdose Society uh, reached out to uh, this week and, and was telling us about some of the issues that they're having. Uh, this, it, it's, there will be the argument, this should have been done years ago, but at least now you're, you're getting there. Uh, is it a sigh of relief that the program is now going there? Because you're, you're going to be dealing with these, this escalating drug problem, and it's not just fentanyl, it's everything else. Then you've got social issues, then you've got everything else piled on top of it. Yeah, I think that, I mean, since I've taken office, the city's been advocating, we've you know, MLA Coulter and I have been advocating with the city that we need to see this here. We know Chilliwack, um, you know, does a lot of work to try to um, support people in a multitude of ways. Um, I can't express how devastating um, the overdose situation is, um, these are people, be it they're people's kids, there's people, people's friends, brothers, sisters. Yeah. Um, that being said, the CAR program is only one of the ways um, that we're, we're tackling this, attacking this. So, yeah. And in Chilliwack, there are also multiple ways. It, there's not going to be one lever that solves anything. And one of the things I'm so, so glad about is um, Minister Whiteside and previously Minister Malcolmson, they absolutely understand that it, it needs to be, we need to come at this from all of the directions at once. So in Chilliwack, this is an additional layer. It's an important layer. Mm -hmm. It will um, benefit our policing and public safety as well as our response to mental health and addiction um, on the ground during you know that emergency or that crisis. But it is only one of the ways that we here in Chilliwack and across BC are, are trying to um, address the opioid crisis. Uh, a couple of other things on the go uh, that, uh, first off, you've had a busy summer, then you've got a busy fall. The legislature is back in October. October, that's right. It's yeah. going to be busy. I think I, I'm anticipating we're going to be uh, packed and working hard, and um, I'm looking forward to, to being to being back there and getting to that piece of my job. I say I have like three jobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, UBCM, which is the uh, Union of BC Municipalities, that's uh, always in September. Correct me I'm on that. So, yeah, it's coming up in September. And um, I mean, I have the privilege of representing three municipalities as well as a regional district. So um, Chilliwack, Harrison Hot Springs, uh, District of Kent and Fraser Valley Regional District, yep. of course. And it's an opportunity not only for the municipalities to come together and for there to be resolutions and such, but there's also the ability to request meetings one-on-one -on -one with different ministers um, and advocate directly. And that uh, it's, it's a nice wrap to what I've been pushing for all year with the ministries and it's a nice introduction um, to what I'll be pushing for coming up. And you know full well, as soon as you get there, you're going to hear people saying, tell the transportation minister about the highways thing. And that's, <laughs> that could be a whole a different uh, discussion. Um, recently, uh, we were all at Pride uh, in Chilliwack. Um, and it was just absolutely amazing at how this thing has grown from basically a little barbecue in 2019 at Chilliwack Secondary School to this. It's now become this major event. Um, as a as an elected official, are you still getting any pushback that it, it comparing to say when you first started in 2019? Uh, I know the Terry Westerbees and the Mallory Tomlinsons. They've said it's actually it has improved. So from your perspective, uh, has that pushback kind of died off a little bit, or is it shifted? Is it? Are we talking about hate? <laughs> we're talking about hate. Okay. We're going to talk about hate. We're going to talk about homophobia. Right. So one of the things that, if we're talking about hate, let's name it. Let's call yeah. it hate. Um, and not all conversation, not all questions, not all mm -hmm. learning is hate, but we're talking about yeah. hate. So um, since I've been elected in 2020, I've also been appointed by the Premier, um, you know, this past year as Parliamentary Secretary for Gender Equity. So not only do I get to see what's happening here in Chilliwack and Chilliwack-Kent, but across the province. I think that one of the things that I've seen, at least, is I don't I don't know if the voices, um, the detractors, or the 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 people who would who would silence or or hate, 
um, restrict others. I don't know if they've gotten quieter. Mm. What I do know is that the voices of allies and community members and the 2SLGBTQ um, you know, community as a whole here in Chilliwack, well, they're louder and they're fierce yeah. <laughs> um, and proud. Like that's what pride's yeah. about. It's a celebration. It was a, it, it's a protest. It's all of those things. So I know that there, it's hard for me to say that things are Quote, lessening. improving? Uh, they are improving. They are improving. But I don't know that the hate is lessening. It's hard for me to say that yeah. when we look up around and we see rising instances of hate and violence and threats, yeah. um, you know, <clears throat> provincially and nationally and definitely globally. Yeah. Um, so I, I wouldn't want us to feel overly insulated. Yeah. But do I think that I hear more in my community about more people being represented in a way um, that's healthier? Yeah, I, I do. I, th I think I'm hearing more and that's what I like. Uh, one other thing we were talking about this off air, um, you were off to a PEI, is, what was it, a status of women con conference nationally? Yeah, so we had a status, it's called a Federal Provincial Territorial Table, and it's fantastic. Um, it was hosted by the minister in PEI, as well as a federal minister, um, uh, Marcy Ian. And we, all of the ministers responsible for the status of women, uh, got together in PEI, and we had great conversations, learned about a lot of the things that were happening, good discussion, um, and we're all looking forward to... Um, you know, a lot of discussion about the National Action Plan. And uh, for me, very relevant because um, I'm currently leading the work on BC's Gender-Based Violence Action Plan, mm -hmm. which which will be coming out. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> will do. Kelly Padden, MLA Chilliwack Kent, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. And you're watching This Week. This week continues with uh, Steve Sacramento, who I haven't had a chance to sit down and, and talk with you in a while, with Pacific Autism Family Network. And you guys have been at that uh, location in Chilliwack, downtown Chilliwack, for quite some time. Uh, but this isn't the first. It's, it's an interesting uh, organization. You start you started in Richmond, and then it's branched out throughout uh, BC? Yeah, so the, the, main, the main hub is in Richmond. It's a 60,000 square foot facility that serves the families in the, in, in the province and the lower mainland. And it was started by Wendy and Sergio Kokia um, out of Vancouver. So we have the place in Richmond, and then they, they have a hub and spoke model. So they have a, a spoke in Kelowna and a spoke in Prince George. And then four years ago, we opened our spoke in Chilliwack. So, yeah. Now, autism, uh, and, and I, I, well, let's get into the numbers off the bat, too, but uh, you have a son, and he's 27 and just brighter than bright, but... He has to, you have to deal with, the family has to deal with autism. Yeah, so our, our son is, we consider a, a success story. Yeah. Uh, he was diagnosed at four, and at that time, one in 110 children were diagnosed on the spectrum. Today, it's less than one in 40, so it's, it's, it's a lot more prevalent. Yeah. Uh, our son is doing very well. He's uh, uh, almost a Red Seal certified plumber, and, oh. um, you know, he, he still has his challenges, but he's he's doing great. And, and it was through all the programs and services that we have, utilized over the years to get him from point A to point B that has, uh, you know, caused, you know, that has added to the success in the family. We have three other daughters as well. And as a family unit, it's, it's worked very well. So there is, and some people will bristle at this, but I, it always comes up, uh, is someone autistic or in the aut autism spe uh, spectrum? What's the proper Polite way, political correct way. How do you deal with that? Yeah, you talk to a, uh, talk to a parent of a, a loved one on this uh, on the spectrum. Just say my, my son or daughter are on the autism spectrum, yeah. right? So, and it's very wide. You have you you have your very se severely autistic, and then you have your mildly autistic. Mm -hmm. I know of one individual who was diagnosed at 57 that he was on the autism spectrum, and he wasn't aware of it, right? So over the years, they've they've gotten a lot better in diagnosing it and also treating it and providing services, which is what our our center does. Uh, and before we get into the services, for those who really do not understand autism, in a nutshell, what is it? You know, it's a neurological disorder, um, and it, you know, it can be everything from nonverbal incontinent to social anxiety. So, uh, and, and you know, you'll see some autistic children stim to release the stress. 
Um, you know, they may flap their arms, they may, mm -hmm. you know, slap themselves, they may hit their head against the wall, um, but they may just be quiet and not want to speak to anybody. Uh, a lot of times they won't want to look, you, look you in the eye, have eye contact. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a neurological disorder that, you know, that, that families, you know, have to deal with and it's growing more prevalent. So. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the, the uh, services that uh, are provided in Chilliwack? Because I remember when you opened, uh, the thing that I had never heard of before was a Zuselin room. And I found that thing fascinating. Whoever created that was brilliant, obviously, to, I guess, not over overbear someone with with sensory overload is is that in a nutshell am i on yep. the right path there yeah or? it's a calming room yeah, yeah you know it's it, it, you go in there you just feel at ease yeah. right so and there's a few of them throughout the lower mainland and we have one as well so it's a room where where, where children can go in and de-stress and just calm themselves because a lot of times they have to release that anxiety yeah and th that's one of the first things that that we implemented so some of the, the pro programs i would assume are for the parents as well. Like, what do I do? Uh, can you just, in a nutshell, uh, describe a couple of those? That, that's key. I mean, I, I go back to when we got the diagnosis, we went to a parent support group, and that was really helpful to help guide us down that path. And, and we have those those services as well. You, you know, we have uh, parent uh, uh, social groups where they can share their stories, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so they know they're not alone. Uh, when we got the diagnosis way back, it was a parent that started to tell me what his son was dealing with and they, they ticked all our boxes. So we find that very important that uh, parents can share those stories. We have teen groups, we have uh, talk groups, uh, we have uh, youth employment, we have one-on-one -on -one services. Uh, so we're able to provide a, a variety of services. We deal with, we help well over 125 families and our manager at the Spoke, Hannah Venera, she does a great job, so. Yeah. Uh, one other person who is in the public eye that uh, you may probably know of, Willow Reeshelt, the Chilliwack School Board Chair, her youngest is in the autism spectrum. So we've talked about some of the programs. Now, you got to pay for this, and some of the fundraisers are really a, a lot of fun. You've got, what, golf and, and what else? What's happening? Well, we've got, we're 15 years running now, and we've, uh, for 15 years, we've had a golf tournament, and it's called the Sacomaniac Agriculture for Autism. I love the title. I tied in my three loves, you know, agriculture, I'm born, I'm a farm boy. Yeah. Um, uh, agri um, golf? Autism yeah, and golf. golf. I love to golf. Not great at it, but I love to do it. <laughs> so we, we, we started a tournament 15 years ago, and, you know, our first year we raised $12,000. Going into this year, we had amassed 850,000 so our goal this year was to try to hit that million dollar mark mm -hmm. and we did it like you know the wow. night of we were $5,000 short I love I love sharing the story we were $5,000 short so I stood there and I said we are $5,000 short away from our goal. Who wants to pledge $1,000? And all of a sudden, all these people stood up. Oh. And, and we hit the $1 million mark. So all of the funds that we have raised, you know, we started in 2009, but we started supporting the, auto, the Pacific Autism Family Network in 2014. And all the funds that we have raised since then have gone towards the Spoke and also uh, an adult um, resource center at the main hub in Richmond. So yeah, our families don't have to pay anything. We also have a fishing derby. So we've done the fishing derby now for four years and that grew from three boats to this year we had 15 boats 60 fishermen you know we did our sturgeon fishing it was a great day the fishing is not so great this time of year yeah, because, of the, the, because of the weather the, yeah the drought and, yeah. and throughout the year we do online auctions and we also have supporters that just give throughout the year one of the things that we have learned is that you know the community the fraser valley community and, and the autism uh, sorry the agriculture community in particular they stepped up. I mean, it's been challenging for our farmers, you know, uh, cost of production, re reduced margins, all those sorts of things. But they've written the checks out and they continue to support what we do. And it's just great. So uh, heading in towards uh, Christmas and that uh, any other events uh, or are the things kind of on the back burner right now? Well, right now we just had our, our 15th uh, on the 17th. So it was like last week. Yeah. And so we're taking a breath. We uh, go through all the tax stuff, get everybody their charitable tax receipts because yeah. we are registered. Note for that. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. we are yeah. registered. And then we uh, we set up the uh, registration for next year. Now, Interestingly enough, last year, 
We opened up registration in the middle of November. We were sold out for 186 golfers by the beginning of December. Uh -huh. That's the following that we have, and you, yeah. you gain that over the 15 years. Fantastic. Uh, you're easy to find. You're literally across the street from District, District 1881 downtown. Uh, how to get a hold of you, social media, Facebook, email, what uh, what should we do for not only information, but if somebody wants to make a donation? Well, we'd love to take the donation. So, I mean, www.sacomaniacsgolf.com. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you can donate directly on our page. Our, our, our spoke has a, has a website as well, so you can go online and, and check that out as well, where you can see all the programs and Hannah keeps that up all the time. So, um, so yeah, you can reach us through our, and we're also on Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. We're on all those. I guess it's called X now. But yeah, I still anyway, call it Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so we are on all the social media uh, forums, and even the last couple of years, we've had uh, two young ladies, you know, who happen to be my great nieces who we dubbed the TikTok twins, and they came out to our tournament the last three years, and they did a bunch of TikTok videos and did an amazing job just to help create more awareness for why we do and what we do. Fantastic. Steve, Steve Sacramento, Pacific Autism Family Network. As always, thanks for coming along. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're watching this week. This week in Chilliwack Sports. In BCFC action over the weekend, the Huskers had the bye. Heading into Labor Day weekend, the Langley Rams will host the West Shore Rebels. The Valley Huskers will be at home to take on the Kamloops Broncos Saturday night at 7. All games are on bcfctv.com. The GW Graham Junior and Senior Varsity football teams have released their fall schedules. As school gets back on track, Chill TV is putting out the call for all schools to let us know what your sports and academic schedules are so we can mention them here on This Week in Chilliwack. While the Chilliwack Giants were having fun playing the halftime of the BC Hamilton game, the pros weren't having fun at all. The lackluster Lions lost to Hamilton 30-13. But the Giants capped off a week that included punt, pass and kick, and then a halftime scrimmage in front of over 23,000 fans. Thanks to Colleen Alton for all the photos. Live Pro Wrestling is back in Chilliwack. All-Star Wrestling presents Attack in Chilliwack on Saturday, September 9th with Classic Pro Wrestling live at the Shiam Leisure Center Gym. Come see Chilliwack's own Sean Murphy, the Prodigy, along with Battle Wasp, Inferno, The Thunder from Jalander, Azim the Dream, Todd Quality, and the aptly named Eddie Osborne, and more. And yes, this is a family-friendly event. The BCHL is now streaming on Flow Hockey. Hockey TV is now Flow Hockey, and it is the only place to watch all BCHL preseason, regular season, and playoff games this year. That includes Chilliwack, Langley, and Surrey. You can sign up for an annual pass at $200. There will be Labor Day racing, weekend racing, at Agassi Speedway on Saturday with the Mini Stock Invitational. Check their website for details. And the Chilliwack Chiefs training camp starts Friday and Saturday, and inter-squad games will be open to the public. Go to the Chiefs' social media for more information. And now, carry with the weather. You should be dancing. Chilliwack Hospice Society is hosting our 18th annual Disco Gala, presented by Silver Creek Travel, on Saturday, September 23rd, at the Say Community Centre on Chilliwack River Road. Restaurant 62 will be catering a gourmet plated meal. And DJ Adam Kruger will be spinning all the disco hits you know and love for a disco dance after the live auction. Tickets are on sale now for $175, available online at Chilliwack Hospice Society. So get ready to boogie. We'll see you at the 18th annual Chilliwack Hospice Society Gala, September 23rd. Chill TV long weekend weather. So, Carrie, will the Labor Day long weekend be true to form and rain? Yes, Don. Monday is going to be kind of rainy. So you'll have to find something to do indoors. Friday, Saturday, high 20s, but that'll be the last time we'll see that for a while. We're coming down to the low 12s, 14s at night, which is definitely start of September. Ever wonder why September is the ninth month and it's actually short for September? September 7th month? Well, it's because, fun fact, in 45 BC,
the Romans decided to mess with the calendar a little bit. They added January and February and changed the names of Quintilis and Sextilis to July and August, after the Roman emperors Julius and Augustus Caesar, thus making the calendar work a little bit better with the seasons. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, Carrie, and thank you for watching. If you have a local story you'd like us to report on, you can always send us a note and your video and pictures to news at chilltv.ca. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great and safe long weekend. I'm Don Lane.